G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now, Anthropic or Claude has just dropped something really, really interesting and that is the Chrome extension or the Claude Chrome extension for Chrome. Now, I haven't used this yet, I've just installed it and this is going to be my first look and your first look probably. So you can see that I've got the, and we're gonna put, just put it through its paces and see what we can do. So we can see that I've got the Chrome extension installed. I am in Google Chrome, this would work in Edge as well. And I've got my little Claude extension uh, installed. I'll put the the uh, link to where you grab that extension in the comments below. Um, you can see automatically I can change the model by the looks of it. So I've got uh, HiQ 4.5. I've got Opus 4.5, and it loads my it loads the panel on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I thought I might give it a try um, and see what we can do inside a SharePoint, all right? So let's have a look. Um, let's say, can you navigate to and open the compliance document library uh, and then filter the documents based on the documents status column. Um, and find the expired documents, all right? And let's see what happens. So we're gonna pass this off. Now, we can see what's going on here. Okay, so Claude has put together a plan and it's, here's the approach. And it looks like that looks good. So I'm gonna approve that plan. So it's created the plan, understood what I'm asking, and here we go. So it's navigated to the SharePoint site. Now you can see the glow of orange around the outside of this. So it's actually taking control of the browser, right? And it's navigating and doing this task for me. It's reading the page, it's accessing the compliance document library. It's going to the document status column and let's, it's taking a screenshot. So this is how it's understanding what is uh, what to do next. So it's then clicking. So it's filtering by document status. And let's see if it picks expired. It has. It's still going, taking another screenshot here. You can see that we can stop Claude in the middle of the screen there. And look, there is our expired documents and it's actually done that exactly what I've asked. So this browser extension um, is taking control of the browser and it's done exactly what I wanted it to do, all right? So it's reviewing these document lists. Let's have a look. Uh, so it's taken 21 steps. Now let's just drag this across a little bit here. It's got the documents, there's the four docs it's actually giving me a summary now as well. So successfully navigated and a summary of everything that has it has done. All right, so let's just, what about we try something else? So now that we're on this site, let's see if it stays in context. Uh, can you now please do the same thing to the permits and approvals document library, all right? And let's see what happens. All right, so we, we're already on the site. So it's generated a plan. Uh, let me just read the plan. Okay, and we've approved that. So let's have a look. So the glow is still around the outside. Okay. And we're reading the page interactively. It's found the document library. But let's see what happens here because the document status column, I don't think from memory I have expired in this document status column, all right? So let's have a look. So it's filtering documents, it's found the document status column and we're probably gonna go filter by, so it's taking another screenshot. And See, we don't, so we don't have an expired value here. So let's have a look and see how it handles this, right? So it's taking a screenshot again. And verifying the status. Okay, so here it is. There are no expired documents in this library, the available document status. So it does understand this. Okay, so that is good. 
Uh, so we could continue on if we wanted to. Now, what if what what else have we got down here? So I don't want to notify me. Um, we've got an option here. Okay, so act without asking. So what I might do is I'm going to turn that on. Now that flicks us across into high risk. So Claw can take most actions on the internet. Now this setting could put your data at risk. Okay. I'm okay with that in this environment. Now we've also got the option here to teach Claude, right? So I'm going to go back to my home page. Now let's see what happens here. So I'm going to uh, select teach Claude and you can see that teach Claude here, uh, teach Claude your workflow, go through the steps as if you're teaching a new teammate. Claude will learn the process and repeat it for you. Okay, let's give this a go. All right, so what I want you to do is we're going to go through the process of creating a new SharePoint document library. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go navigate to the home page, which we have just done there. The next thing we need to do is click the new button and we're going to go to new document library. That's going to open up a dialog box. Now, from here, we're going to choose blank library. Then we need to give the document library a name. So I'm going to call this one Claude, but the user would need to make or, or add their own name for the document library. Then we will hit the create button. That will then create the document library and we can then start adding our documents or adding metadata if we need to. All right, so what we've done there, it's generating, by the looks of it, it's generating a shortcut. We'll turn off voice narration here. Okay, so here is a shortcut. Now let's have a look and it's a prompt. So it's telling us to navigate to the Westgate uh, to create a new document library. Did you, did you, uh, detailed visual context for execution. So it's got the step by step. It's telling me to navigate to that site. You will see a SharePoint page with a purple J. Okay. Step two, click on home. Step three, click new. Okay. So it's gone through and explained this step by step. So let's, and it's created a doc library. All right. So let's create that shortcut um, and let's go create doc library called uh, test. Uh, let's go library and give it the name of Claude test. All right. And let's send that. So what we've done is we've recorded the step-by-step -step process. Um, and Claude has understood that process. All right, so we've, it's created the plan. It's navigating to the site, which, we're, which it's on. It's gone to the home page. Again, it's taking a screenshot. Now remember that I, I did select it can do this without me confirming. It's clicking the new button. It's now going to, it's taken a screenshot should go through hopefully let's have a look and see okay new document library let's see if it actually names it what we we actually called it so it's got this we should click blank good let's see if it actually types in uh what did i say it was going to be clawed test i think all right again it's taking screenshots along the way and this is real time, so I haven't done anything or any editing or anything like that. So it's creating the new document library with details now. Good, Claude test, excellent. So it's typed in Claude test. Taking another screenshot. And again, remembering acting without asking, this is just going through without me needing to, let's click the create button. Good, it's created and there it is. It's cre actually created the document library using that command. So I could now use that forward slash command and create document libraries. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's now giving me a summary. New document library called has been created successfully. 
You see the screen uh, see the, in the screenshot, the library is now active and displayed. Yeah, SharePoint document library, and that has now been done. Amazing. So your first look, and there's going to be more on this topic um, because that is my first look at it. And I am now going to do a lot more work, uh, a lot more um, investigation as to what the core code extension can do. So I hope that brings some value because this is exciting news. Thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next one.